Hi, I'm Colleen. Hi, I'm Dakota. And today we're talking about the draft New York State Computer Science and Digital Fluency Learning Standards. We're go going to talk about the history behind them and give a little bit of an overview of what they are and what they involve. And what is like computer science? And we're going to talk about what computer science is and digital literacies. Um, computer science is a study of computers of why and how computers work and digital literacies is the digital technology to create research communicate collaborate and share information and to work so um the standards came together in february of 2017 and the survey that new york state education department released to the educational field asking for feedback on topics related to digital literacies there were 3,375 responses and those were made up of over 70 percent were teachers and the remaining 30 percent were administration BOCES administration staff and members of educational organizations and 93 percent of the participants who completed the survey felt that a need exists for common statewide understanding of technology and skills students should be able to demonstrate to be prepared for college, careers, and citizenship in the 21st century. Which 93% is actually quite a lot to actually yeah, think definitely. that 93% all agreed on this common like statewide understanding. In 2018, New York State passed um, a law along with the governor and requiring New York State Education Department to create a draft for New York State K through 12 computer science standards. Um, like some like New York State, they believe digital literacy is very vital because its influence has been overtaking our world in a way because technology is everywhere. <laughs> And they believe that all New York State learners were, will develop technological literacy to enter college and become productive members of the workforce and succeed as citizens. So basically, this is really important to understand in school, to lay down the foundation in school, because this is going to be their lives once they graduate. And there is an increase in the amount of jobs that are technologically related. And New York State also realizes that not every student is going to go into a technological field, but it seems that most jobs today have some kind of technology involved in them. If you have an office job, you're expected to be fluent with email and making spreadsheets, maybe things like that. So there's really few jobs that are not going to have some kind of technology involved in it. It's almost the same like with like even like fast food places, for instance, like they have those um, everything on the like the screen to cash someone out is all digital and they have right. to know how to like hit all the buttons. Like I used to work at Stewart's and it's a whole digital screen and everything is like has like little sub like titles and stuff to go to find like the beverage or the food or the right gas. that's a good example and you have to be quick with that because mm -hmm. people are are waiting and counting on yep. you to be quick um just the other day i had a doctor's appointment where in the doctor's office they changed the check-in procedure where you no longer go to the desk and give your name you have to go to a kiosk yeah. and they said that made the day kind of crazy because a lot of people weren't familiar mm -hmm. they you know they're not used to doing that they don't know what to do even though the screen walks you through, it's like kind of foreign to some people. Yeah. So just little things like that, that's just the direction that we're going in where a lot of things that we just as a regular person and not even in our job are, are going to have to deal with technology so much more. We need to be we need to be familiar with it and know how to use it. Yeah, it's like the older generation doesn't always know how to use technology like the new generation does. Right. Or like you have individuals that have like learning disabilities or intellectual and developmental disabilities like are like they going to be able to perform that task like that simple task of going into the doctor's office and 
saying like hidden buttons because everything's made for the generalized public right that's definitely important to consider so it's like we always have to kind of think about like all the different kind of people that are in this world for technology and same with right. when you're making the standards for the educational world because our students are all unique and different and have different learning styles and abilities right so with these standards um they may not all be able to be followed exactly as they're written because you might have to modify them for students who learn differently or who are not going to be able to um to follow these directly and to to use technology in the mm -hmm. same way that that the majority of students would be able to yeah and i agree like i believe like standards kind of create like a good foundation for teachers to go off of to be able to have their students complete that mastery level and like the standards were kind of developed into like six concept areas that yes so those concept areas or are, are computational thinking and programming networks and artificial intelligence data and systems design cybersecurity, impacts of computing so it's like interesting how those are like the six concepts that New York State, like a group of people that who create who create the standards, pick those to be our six concepts that we have to go by. And what we're focusing on today, though, is really just the digital literacy part. That is, that's the actual mm -hmm. the sixth concept area. So that's the one that we're focusing on. But it just shows you how how much is involved in this. We're focusing on digital literacy, and there's so much involved in that. But then there's five other areas, and you have to kind of, even though there's six concepts, and like we're just focusing on one, but each of these concepts have sub -conce concepts with it so like it's even broken down even more and it's kind of expands from kindergarten all the way to 12th grade so no matter what these kids are learning throughout their whole 13 years of being in school right so for each concept they have two or more subconcepts, and then each subconcept has a number of standards. And those standards are grouped into grade bands. So there's a total of four grade bands, and that begins with K through two, and then three through five, six through eight, and nine through 12. So students are expected to master the standards by the end of the last year of the grade band. So like, Kindergartner, from kindergarten through second grade, like having them be introduced to computers because they're probably already induced to te technology in this time because there's iPhones and tablets with like their shows and games, like learning games and everything. Right. So you see now you see babies and toddlers already with usually it starts off as the parents handing their cell phone to the kids to just kind of like keep them occupied. But now you see kids that have their own iPads when they're two years old and they're watching TV on there and yeah. they're playing interactive games. So they're already really familiar with this stuff by the time they get into kindergarten. And but we also have to like teach them because at that age, the like the safety of using computers and understanding like computers are not for you to like for everything like teaching them about like what private information is like how they shouldn't give their names out or their birthdays or where they live right because of safety and stuff which so all of that falls under the digital citizenship subconcept subconcept of digital literacy and that's what they do in kindergarten through second grade is they are providing examples of online information about real people and identifying ways that people put their own information into online spaces so they're 
they're talking about how to be safe online right away, which is really important. Yeah, especially at that age. They're kind of like, they're very innocent children who almost kind of think everyone's their friend. They don't understand that concept yet. But then when you get to like the third and fifth grade um, students, like they're a little bit more advanced and kind of starting realizing like what their surroundings are and like even like cyberbullying, like at that young of an age that that is already kind of like we can teach them to kind of prevent the cyberbullying because now cyberbullying is a big thing and when back in the past it wasn't right for that grade band three to five um is that students create psas on online safety and cyberbullying to include in district or school newsletters or newspapers or make posters to put up in the middle school so that's just an example of how that standard is applied in that grade so that they're learning that concept and they are creating something to make other people aware about the importance of being aware of cyberbullying, um, seeing it happen around you, or more importantly, to make sure that you're not doing that to somebody else. But if you are involved in that, knowing how to deal with it. Yeah, it's a really good thing for students to learn, and it's really good that they're putting that into the standards, like, to create that, like, proactiveness to stop bullying, because bullying now isn't just face-to-face or in the physical world anymore. Right, that's such a big part that people talk about, is that Um, years ago, if you were being bullied at school, it kind of ended when the day was over and you went home. Mm -hmm. And now with the way technology is, it's possible to be bullied 24 seven when you're not in school, when you're on summer vacation, when you're on, you know, holiday break from school. Um, there's really, there's really no break from that. So it is really important to educate kids about this and how to handle themselves online and how to protect themselves online and if they're the victim of this who to talk to Mm -hmm. um just how how to deal with it the right way and then like once the ad grade level like then there's also like six through eight where after you're teaching all about like the safety and the computer like of computers and technology and like cyberbullying we are starting to like get the fundamentals of building skills and programs like such as coding web designing and like teaching them the basics of this new type of subject in technology right which coding and like creating websites is pretty tricky at times I, I think because I've tried it before and it <laughs> it was a lot of learning different way to like it's complicated to say the least <laughs> yeah it's too complicated for me but in thinking about when these standards will eventually be implemented obviously kids are already learning technology mm-hmm. at a younger age um But it will be really interesting to see once this is all implemented, how things change, where you have a kid coming in brand new to school in kindergarten and having this foundation that they build on. Because if you look at the standards, the way all of them are, it starts off with a very basic introductory kind of thing in K through two. And then as the grade bands advance, they build on to that foundation so that when you get to the nine through 12 grade band, it's very advanced. So like you're saying with coding, that's mm-hmm. what's gonna happen in nine through 12. And the kids will be familiar enough, I think with using computer and commands and things like that. But by the time they get through nine, nine to 12, it's not really like learning something from the beginning. It's kind of building onto what they already have learned. So I think that, they'll probably be more comfortable than 
obviously like if we were to just learn coding right now it would be different for us because we don't have that foundation that these kids are going to have so it'll be really interesting to see like this next generation going through all this the standards from the beginning right away yeah like i have actually had a student who he was like yeah he's like i just made my own website about like gaming and stuff and i was like you did what and he's like yeah (laughs) it was pretty easy you just put this code in and then this and this and he was showing me it and i was like i am so lost and he goes it's not that hard and i'm like (laughs) okay (laughs) i was and how old was he he was maybe like 13 12 13 yeah so i'm just like (laughs) Yeah, I was like, you're going to have to teach me. Like, you're going to be my teacher and I will learn how to do this. Because I remember trying to do it in school and I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah. (laughs) And it was like really new because like our teacher was kind of like, yeah, I'm teaching you this, but I'm still learning this myself. Right. (laughs) And it's crazy like to think like kids are already like mastering these programs where we have just recently learned how to master them right and they're teaching us new things yeah definitely because you know they are digital natives and just they don't know anything other than being in a digital world so it's just like so much more natural to them it's kind of funny because like one day in class i was like one of the kids asked, they're like, what would we do without any of our technology? And I started laughing because I was like, I remember when I didn't have technology. Like, I didn't have right. a cell phone or a laptop. <laughs> I was like, I didn't have cell service. Like, my town just recently got cell service. Like, mm-hmm. like we still even have, we don't even have a street light. <laughs> or even a, <laughs> like a, like anything. Like, we're still like, kind of like back in the past yeah it's funny because they can't really imagine anything mm -hmm. different than right now yeah and how did you not have cell phones how did how did we have to go places and you know maybe use a pay phone if we needed to contact somebody or my favorite is like none of the kids like remember phone numbers and they're like i just have to use my phone i'm like what if you don't have your phone on you Mm -hmm. and they're like it's always with me i'm like but what if yeah what if it's not you know and they're like well are you gonna get in touch with somebody yeah or like having a gps or maps (laughs) yeah i'm just like um (laughs) doesn't always work (laughs) so it's gonna be really kind of like i'm curious on how the standards will like work themselves out with the advancement of technology and like how the next time that they do the revision of this draft, like, where is it going to change? Or is it going to add more, like, concepts to it? Right. Because this whole process, they've been going through um, revising it. So they, they started out by having work groups Um, And then they had a work group assigned to each concept area. And those people were responsible for the subconcepts, writing the standards, the clarifying statements and the examples. And then after that, they would revise. They had the survey that was recently completed. And now they're back where they're going to, they're looking through all the information that they collected from the most recent survey. And then they'll be probably revising again um, and they'll have a meeting in January of 2020 with the Board of Regents to discuss everything and how to proceed from there. Which like it's I'm it's just really curious like how how are they gonna make sure that this is always gonna fit into the educational world like with if technology keeps going at the rate that it's going. Right. There might be times maybe perhaps later on where they have to revise what they already, what they end up deciding on that they're going to implement next year. Yep. I guess, well, time will tell. Yeah. So So they will be, they said that they will be providing updates um, 
I guess once the meeting happens, once the Board of Regents meeting happens, which is just next month, um, and then they'll provide updated information and guidance regarding the standards, like timelines for the rollout and the impl implementation. So I think we're just gonna have to wait and see, and then maybe next month we can finally know what those standards will be. Yep, sounds like it. I this I think we had a really good talk about standards and what the history of it and a little bit about what, what it is and what it could be and what it might turn into. I think so too. This was a good conversation. Right. <laughs> All right. Bye everyone. Bye. <laughs>